been brought to my attention in all the comments on all my different carburetor videos over the years that some of you out there don't understand what jetting is or what the goal of jetting is. And honestly, that's my fault. I did not ever in any of these videos explain what jetting is and what the goal is. Well, I'm going to rectify that in this video here. Wow! To begin understanding what proper jetting is, we need to understand what the proper air fuel mix is. Now that can be different for different types of engines and different types of fuels. But we'll just keep it simple and talk about typical, plain old, regular, at the pump, gasoline or petrol. If you take a look at this chart right here, this is a chart of what the proper air fuel mixture for typical gasoline is. And that's approximately 14.7 to 1. Now what does that mean? That means 14.7 parts of air to one part of fuel. Now in ideal conditions this would be the optimal ratio of air to fuel to get a complete burn which would get you know, the most efficiency not only fuel mileage but also power. But in the real world there's a lot of variables. Air temperature, uh, engine operating temperature, uh, air density, and even altitude. And we're going to go over that in this video. But I wanted to show this chart here might help those who don't really understand what you're trying to achieve, what this really means. All right, on this chart, we're going to show that given an RPM, that air fuel mix is going to change, obviously, as you open the throttle and close the throttle. Opening and closing the throttle in every carburetor is controlling uh, one and two things, the air and the fuel, depending on the carburetor design. But as you open the throttle, you're allowing more air to flow through the carburetor. Well, subsequently, more air, we got to add more fuel. That's where your pilot jet, your main jet, your jet needle, all come into play here, which you can learn about more about that in this video here about jetting explain which goes through the theory of operation of the carburetor so I will not go through that here in this video but as you can see at idle it's pretty easy to adjust the mixture to be near perfect because the engine RPM is stationary and generally given the day you're running the operate the motorcycle the temperature and the air density are going to be the same so, getting it just right will be easy, but as you open the throttle, that's where it gets more a little more complicated. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about air density and what it, that, that means and how it will affect jetting. Air density has to do with how many oxygen molecules are within a given volume of air. Lower density, there's less molecules of air. Higher density, obviously there's more. And it's the available oxygen to burn that air fuel mix is what we're talking about here. So let's go over the three things that are out of your control that will affect jetting. First one is air temperature. Higher end air temperature, air is less dense. Lower air temperature, the air is more dense. Less fuel, more fuel. Humidity plays a factor in this. It's closely related to air temperature. However, high humidity, more fuel. Low humidity, less fuel. And the third one is altitude, which has a lot to do with geography, but also where do you mostly ride your bike. So, high altitude, thinner air, less dense. Lower altitudes, air is more dense, so there's more available oxygen. Now a lot of people are going to ask me about altitude because they're going to be like, well I live at one altitude but I ride at all different altitudes. Well therein lies the challenge and usually with jetting you're going to want to pick some tuning that is somewhere in between because there's a generally accepted range where a certain jet and such will work in a certain range but you cannot go from say 2,000 feet above sea level to 
13,000 feet and expect the same jetting to apply. In that case, I would probably try to split the difference, but you're going to notice either at your lowest altitude that the engine's going to run a little lean, may get a little hot on the verge of overheating, and when you're at high altitudes, the uh, jetting may be a little too rich still, and so it'll be sputtering a little bit, uh, maybe blowing a little bit black smoke out the tailpipe and risk for carbon fouling your spark plug. So with carbureted bikes, jetting for altitude is not an exact science as far as picking the right jet. Sometimes guys have to rejet for massive changes in altitude. It's bonus time! Related to air temperature and altitude is this little uh, pocket tuner. Now there are, these are available online as well, just Google for one, but I like a hard copy here. But basically what it is, is you find your stock jetting on the chart here, the slidable part, and then uh, set it to whatever it is, then uh, find your temperature plus or minus, and uh, that will tell you approximately what jet you should change to given a temperature plus or minus the ambient air, air temperature. Same with the elevation down here. Plus or minus given your stock jet will tell you which way to go up and down. Handy little tool. Find one. I'm sure there's an app in the App Store for something like this, but a good little thing. Print it off. Laminate it. Keep it with you. One last tip I want to leave you guys with is with the choke or enrichment system. Some people get a little confused about these, and this is for cold starting only. And cold not only means the ambient air temperature, but it can also mean the engine temperature, a cold engine from rest, meaning not up to operating temperature or you'd shut it down for a couple minutes, but there's still heat built up in the cylinder. So a choke is a valve that controls how much air can move in and out of the carburetor at startup. So when you pull that lever that's called a choke, uh, it's usually operating a little butterfly that restricts the air, thus richening the mixture going through the carburetor on uh, cold starts. The enrichment does the same thing as, it as its name implies, it's just it works opposite. Instead of controlling the air, it's controlling the fuel that's allowed to flow into the carburetor. It opens up a passage either by a plunger or some other means that allows a passage to bypass the main jet and the slide to give an extra shot of fuel directly into the throat of the carburetor on those cold starts where you need a rich mixture. But when the engine starts to warm up, then that's too rich and you need to shut that enrichment down. Same with the choke. As the engine warms up, you need to lean out the mixture essentially by opening the choke and it lets air pass through. Another thing that revolves all the way around jetting that I want to stress is vacuum leaks because those can be elusive and they can give you false uh, senses of what's actually the problem. For example, in a four-stroke, for example, uh, if you have a vacuum leak in the uh, intake of the carburetor holder, uh, in the rubber cracks or in the gaskets leading up to uh, where it mounts to the, the head. Uh, this can simulate an overly lean condition and a lot of people will try to correct a vacuum leak by just keep raising that jet uh, number. And it'll always have an erratic idle or erratic behavior when you hold the throttle because that vacuum leak is letting unmetered air past the slide of the carburetor, which if you watch my other carburetor jetting video that shows the operation, you'll see uh, it's unregulated. This carburetor slide is regulating the air through there. So a vacuum leak is circumventing that. Um, on the converse with two strokes, uh, it also causes a lean mixture, but that can be very detrimental because uh, in a two stroke, you have not only the air fuel mix that needs to burn to make it run, you have an oil and fuel mix that is lubrication. Well, adding, introducing air into there um, leans it out, 
makes the engine run hotter and thus the lubrication cannot do its job and then you can soft seize hopefully the engine or you'll hard seize and you've just ruined pistons, rings and potentially cylinders by doing that. So in each case a vacuum leak whether it be a four stroke or two stroke engine will behave like the engine is running lean. So for some reason your stock jetting doesn't seem to work very good and you keep raising uh, those jet sizes and it still isn't working, you probably have a vacuum leak. All right, that about wraps it up for this video. I hope you learned something. I hope I built on your knowledge and I hope I built on the knowledge that you gained from all my other videos related to carburetors and jetting and things. Maybe I filled in some gaps, hopefully, that I maybe left out in those videos where I assumed people should know this, but that's actually on me because I should never assume that people know certain things like this. So I hope this was beneficial. Please share this video. Please like it. Post it anywhere on the internet that you think people would enjoy it, would learn something. Um, you can find it on my website with a whole host of more information with diagrams and other tips. Um, we just scratched the surface here, but uh, I have a spark plug chart where you can read if you're rich and you're lean and helps you would help you diagnose because there's there's way more to carburetor tuning than just this but this should give you maybe more the foundation to use those other videos to help solve a jetting problem but more often than not stock jetting per the manual is usually darn close and you don't have to do much adjustment from there but anyway I appreciate you watching um, support my website uh, buy some merchandise, some t-shirts. I'm coming up with designs all the time down below, uh, below the description of this video. And uh, like me on Facebook, check me out on Twitter. I'm also on Instagram as well. You might want to follow me over there because I post some funny pictures and little behind the scenes things and stuff I'm working on. So subscribe, like the video, and thanks for watching.